Hello, my name is Fallon Brown and I'm here to help you increase and maintain your credit score. I am so proud of you. You took the initiative. You took the steps to obtain and purchase this course. I promise you these are simple steps, just five steps that will help you. Um, I'm no credit um, guru disclaimer, but I am a mom. I'm a single mom of three who had a credit score that was horrible. I went from 300 to a perfect score. 793, 805, and 811. Within nine months, I was able to do that. So I just wanted to give out the information that helped me. I'm learning that a lot of people are having these courses and sometimes even charge you monthly. And I always hear the same thing, that either your score is increasing a little bit or it's remaining the same, but yet you're still depleting your finances to try to obtain a higher score. With this, with these steps that I implemented myself, everything that I'm telling you to do is what I did. You are guaranteed to win. Yes, guaranteed to win if you apply everything that I've said because I have done it. Within nine months, I was able to go from 300 to a perfect score. So that means that I know what I'm talking about. All I need you to do is to get a pen or paper, uh, a pen and paper, I'm sorry, or pencil, and make sure that you write down each and every step, as well as the little nuggets that I give along the way. Again, if you apply this information step by step, you are guaranteed to win within 30 to 60 days. Most people start seeing results. Um, people have seen results from 60 points to up into 114 points. And we're still going up and they're maintaining it. So I just want to give you these steps. Let's begin. First off, I want to explain to you the credit bureau and who is the credit bureau. So you have three credit bureaus that the agent, the credit um, agencies report to. Equifax, TransUnion, TransUnion, and Experian. Now, you have different systems that um, calculate your scores. You have um, things like Avantage score, CreditWise, and FICO score. There's different types of FICO. So you got FICO A, regular FICO, but for the most part, most lenders pull from the FICO score. Um, places like Credit Karma and things of that nature, they usually use a venture score, which is not bad, but it what it does is give you an idea of where you're at, but you always want to go to places like Experian or TransUnion itself and pull up your FICO score so you can have a great idea of the scores that most lenders will be pulling from. But again, things like, um, you know, these other um, agencies that give out your free score, you know, it's good. It gives an idea, but you always want to focus on your FICO score as well. Things you should consider. I am looking down because I want to make sure I give you everything in this detail. So if I have notes, you should have your notepad too. Things you should consider. After seven years, the credit bureau must remove all charge offs or charges that have accumulated that is on your score. So what am I saying? If you have a T-Mobile bill that's $1,500 and it's seven years to the date of the current date, it has to be removed. So if the credit bureau has not removed it yet, you can do a dispute and they have to remove it. Even if another agency, because most agencies, what they do is they sell your debt. So when people are harassing you for your um for, for the debt that you owe, most of the time it is not the original um debt, um the original person that you took out the loan with. It is usually somebody that bought the debt for pennies and trying to get you know a higher amount from you. So when that happens, happens even after the seven year period, um, you don't have to pay that because honestly, they have to um, acknowledge when the date and how much was accumulated. So if they can't do that, or even if they do that, it is proven that it is seven years um, to date and they have to remove that. So that is something that you want to be mindful of when you are in the process of disputing and paying off debt. Another um, thing that you want to consider, hard inquiries. A lot of people, you know, get discouraged with hard inquiries because sometimes it dings your score and you can go down significantly. But the truth of the matter is after three months, after three months, 
your score as you continue to pay and um, implement the steps that I'm going to give you, it will go right back. It, it, um, it, it will go back into formation of increasing. So you don't have to worry about that. But I will say plan ahead and minimize your hard inquiries at at least nine to 12 months before trying to get a mortgage or a big loan. So this way you have time for your score to go back to um a decent um you know a decent credit uh, a decent credit percentage that you can get the mortgage or the loan so just keep that for your information now let's get into the meaty parts again if you implement these steps step by step accurately the way I'm telling you to do it you will increase your score and you will maintain it the thing that I love about this course is most people will either tell you that they can fix it or they can increase but you never get the tools to maintain your score and the truth is financial education in any aspect is all about maintaining. It's like we all have accumulated a million dollars in our lifetime. We all have increased, but it's maintaining the finances. It's maintaining the increase that we have um, um, have gotten that makes a big difference. So I want to teach you not only how to increase your credit score, but I'm giving you the tools how to maintain your credit score. The first thing you want to do is you want to pull your credit report. If you go to annual credit report.com annualcreditreport.com this is a site where you can pull your credit report for free every year they have to by law give you a free credit report um with with the things that's been happening with the crisis um with uh covid and a lot of things they were doing it weekly i don't know if they're still doing it weekly but for years you can get your credit score at least once a year. So you want to make sure that you go to annualcreditreport.com and you fill out the information and they will give you your report right then and there if you have the um, accurate information. If you don't have the accurate information, they might tell you to send in um, your ID or something like that. But, but for the most part, it's just easy questions, questions about where you used to live, with, um, you know, what lenders you ever dealt with, and they will give you your credit report right then and there. Once you obtain your um, credit report from annual credit report.com now you have um, tools and a guide to go by you can see who you owe you can see the di um, discrepancies with you know what what's on there that it's not accurate with especially with all of the breaches till today um, today that um, occur with lenders and businesses there usually is a lot of things that's not accurate so you get to see that and you can um, dispute <coughs> excuse me and have an idea on what you owe. So that's the first thing you want to do. You want to go to annualcreditreport.com and you want to pull your credit report. After you pull your credit report, now you have an idea on what needs to take place, which you can um, pay off, which you can have removed, you know, but you have a solid foundation on the next steps to take. Step two, now you want to tackle what you owe. You want to tackle what is on this report. Once you see the things that you can fix after you dispute um, what was an error, now what you would do is you can pay off what you owe. Now, the thing what I like about this course, um, what is different about most people that tell you that they can fix your credit, they're charging you monthly. They're charging you all of these fees that can be used to, uh, um, to remove the debt. A Instead of paying this person a thousand dollars, if you have a thousand dollar debt, you can use that money and pay this debt. Now, I want to give you the God's honest truth on what I did when I paid that because you have to somewhere down the line. You have to pay the debt. You know how most people say, oh, they can remove this and remove that. There are still things that need to be owed that you would need to remove at least to get you forward so your report doesn't look like you're a person that stays delinquent and doesn't pay. Now, what I did, what was good for me was I settled. The difference between settling and paying in full is just a different amount of points. So what am I saying? If you paid in full, say like your bill is $1,000 and you paid in full the $1,000, they will up your point 24 points, right? I'm just saying, because it can be more than that. Say like it's 24 points, but say like if you settle and instead of paying the thousand dollars, you said, listen, most people will say, 
um, what do, what can you do? And you say, well, I can do 500. I can do 600. Instead of your points being that amount, it will be 22. So it's not that much of a difference. So being that it's not that much of a difference and I can take the rest of the money and knock off other bills that's due with either I owe or for the credit to increase my credit, I rather do that. But when you do settle or pay in full, you make sure that they promise you that they will remove the um, debt from your credit report. So what you have to do is you get this in writing. You can either see it on a website, which is writing, or they can um, email you or fax you or mail you something, say, something in writing saying that once you pay this, whether in settlement or in full, that they will remove the debt. Most agencies, um, they do have it on their website. So once they have it in, on the website, it is legal documentation in writing stating that this is what they do and they usually do it. It usually takes, um, I wanna say, so by three months, it would be there, but it usually takes about 30 to 60 days, but definitely by 90 days, it will be um, updated and you have nothing to worry about. So the second thing is tackle what you owe. And this will, this will very much significantly increase your credit score. The third thing that you want to do is rebuild or establish credit. What this, what I love about step three is this is something that really, really helps you to increase your score. And for most people who are just um, starting out and you don't have credit and you bought this course, you said, listen, I don't have credit, but I want to learn how to um, maintain and increase my score when I do get credit. This is a great way to establish and rebuild. Say like if you were like me and you had credit credit and you messed it up, you were delinquent and how I had a 300 score and got it up to over a head, um, 800, you would take this step in step three. So rebuilding or establishing credit. Get a secured credit card. Now, a secured credit card, a difference between a secured credit card and an unsecured credit card. A secured credit card is, you say, Capital One, which is a great, 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 great credit card to use as a tool to establish or rebuild your credit is the card that I use. You go to Capital One and you say, listen, I want to rebuild my credit. They say, well, I will give you a secured card. With this secured card, you would have to give me $200. And I would say, like, most times that they if they ask for two, they'll give you a credit score of 300. They'll offer you an, an extra hundred. Now you utilize this card as it's, as if it's like a debit card, but they will report it to the credit bureaus like it is a credit card. So that is the good thing about a secured card. You're utilizing it to your, to which best fits your needs, but it helps to increase your score. So you want to make sure that as you're using this card to either rebuild or establish credit, that you stay within the 30% range and you pay everything back in full on time. When you're establishing credit or rebuilding credit, you don't really want to have anything left over. You don't want to have anything that will um, accumulate interest. You want to show the company, um, in most cases, like let's say Capital One, you want to show Capital One that you're a responsible user. So you want to pay everything off right away. As we get further in the steps, I will tell you how to pay also keep in mind with um, step three with the rebuilding or um, establishing your credit, once you um, continuously on time paying off everything, most of the time, especially with Capital One, they will give you a secured card. So that is amazing. That means this card that was unsecured is now a secured card. Now you have you a credit card and they will increase it. So for me, it went from 300 to 500 to offers to all types of things. Like I have, um, um, airline cards, platinum cards. I have, um, you know, some cards with $10,000. Like you can just really, really, um, leverage yourself and your, your core, your, um, your credit card can increase your limits can increase. So you want to maximize step three. You want to make sure that you're paying everything in full when you're in, when you're on step three, the rebuilding stage, you don't want to just have a little something left over. You want to pay it in full on time in full on time because you want them to see that you're responsible and you want to get your card turned into a secured card as soon as possible.
Now, let's get into step four. Step four and step five, I really, really need you to pay attention because the, these steps right here, if you implement them correctly, it takes your score to a whole nother level. Now, step four is how to correctly assess um, your payments when looking at your, um, statement, right? So when you get, when you get your statement from your credit cards, whether you're rebuilding or you already have your credit cards, now you get your, you get your bill, right? Your statement basically is your bill. You get your bill. You have a due date. You have a statement date. Most people just focus on a due date and go about their business. And that's where you're making the biggest mistake when it's time um, to increase your score. This is very vital. And a lot of people don't teach this. Your due date is what makes you be in good standing with the credit lender. So that means let's say capital one, we've been using capital one, you pay by your due date, let's say January 9th, you pay January 9th, you're in good standing with them. But the credit bureaus, what we talked about, um, in the beginning, Experian, uh, Experian TransUnion, Equifax, they report from the statement date from the statement date. They don't report from your due date. Your due date is just, just they're just telling you, by this date, I need my money from you. But by the 13th, I have to the 13th that I have to report what you owe me. So if you pay attention to these two factors, it will make a great, great, great significant change to your credit score. So what am I saying? I'm saying that what most people do is they have their card, they pay their due date on the 9th, they're in good standing. About time the 10th, they're using their card again. So when the 13th come, your utilization is out the roof. And then so many people just, it, they get confused and they fabricate it like, oh my gosh, I paid. I don't understand why my utilization is so high. I don't understand why my credit score won't, why it won't ping. Why is just stagnant? Why is it just staying there? Why am I not getting offers, right? Because when you start paying your credit card the, the right way, the appropriate way, and your utilization is low, now you look so responsible and people from all of the prestigious credit cards, they will start reaching out to you because they're like, listen, this person knows how to utilize their credit cards. They know how to keep their um, utilization low. I can trust them with this big money. And this would take you to step five. Step five is marrying step four because it still um, is um, telling us how to pay our credit card. So now, step four told us about the due date and the statement date. Now, step five is going to tell us how to pay it so you can make sure by the statement date that you're in good standing with the credit bureau. Listen, the due date, you're going to be in good standing with Capital One, but we need to be in good standing with the bureaus too. People forget this. It is the bureaus that is accumulating your credit score. It is not the credit card people. The credit card people, Capital One, they just give you the money. They just giving you the moolah, baby. But to increase your score, to get that perfect score, to get that um, leverage, to get that power, you need to be impressing the bureau. And how do we impress the bureau? With step four and step five. So now we're on step five. This is the last stop, baby. You made it. You, you, you're going to... You're going to blow things out the water. You're going to do like I did. You're going to go from 300, 500, 600, 700 to 800. You're going to get that perfect store. And this is how you're going to do it. You can either pay your credit card due date weekly before the due date, or like I do, I do it bi-weekly. So what am I saying? January 9th is your due date. You have a credit card that's $500, right? That's your limit. You spent $300. Your utilization is over 30%. It's out the roof. So now you have to work fast and smart to make sure about time it gets to the bureau, you're in right standing for the bureau. So what do you do? Now, you can pay that $300 from the 1st to the 9th, which is the due date, right? Weekly, you can give them the $50. Um, you know, here and there and about time to due date, just wipe it off. Or you can do like I do and I do it bi-weekly. So what am I saying? $300. I will pay it, let's say the third, I pay $200. By the time the ninth come or the eighth, that extra, um, that, that um, $100 that's left, I pay it. Now, listen carefully. If your credit card amount is $500 and your last payment is $100, that is what? 10%? 
no, what, 10, 20% utilization. It's not 30% and it's under 30%, which is great because 30% is average. We don't want to be average. We want a perfect score over here. So now being that I paid that leftover um, amount that was left, the $100, right, on the 9th, you, they only report one time. Listen carefully. The credit company only reports one time to the bureau for the statement date. They're not reporting that you paid it bi-weekly. They're not reporting that you paid it weekly. That's none of their business. That's between you and the credit card company. That's between you and Capital One. So now you're in good standing with Capital One and now you're in great standing with the credit bureau because by the time the 13th come, it looks like all you paid was $100, which brings your utilization down to what? 20% because $50 would be 10% and $100 is 20%. Now you're in great standing. Oh my goodness. You're paying on time and you have low utilization. This guy rockets your score. Some of our customers scores have increased uh, by 114 points, 60 points, 80 points, all by utilizing these methods that I did. Guys, I went from a credit score from 300 to 811 in nine months by using these tools, manipulating the system. This is how you manipulate the system legally on time and accurately. So I'm so proud of you that you took the steps. I know it is not easy getting money up to pay for courses and investing in yourself, but we know that we are our, our best asset that we can ever be in this world beyond anything else is our self, our education. And you took the steps to add an asset to your mind. Now you know how to properly pay, increase, and maintain your credit card and also rebuild or establish credit. How great is that? Which is five simple, simple, simple practical tools. Please make sure that you took the um, time to write down each step. If you haven't, you want to rewind this thing so you can write down each step. You want to make sure that you um, be uh, deliberately um, applying each step and you will see an increase within 30 to 60 days guaranteed. Listen, guys, if you apply it, I see you at the top. Have a great day. Enjoy and make sure whatever you do, you want to keep your utilization low. You don't want to have a utilization that's 30%. Over here, we're not average. We we're, we want our, our credit cards and our credit score to be in good standing and we want perfect scores. So let's try to make sure that we have a utilization of 20%. And also keep in mind, try to pay everything in full. Try not to have anything left over. And if you're going to have anything Thing left over let's have like twenty dollars fifty dollars something that you know you can tackle if it's something that you really want to purchase always make sure that you have the money to pay it back because a credit card is just for leverage it's not to get in debt with so we want to be mindful of that we want to be mindful of how we're purchasing things and i'm telling you you will be great if you utilize everything that i told you have a great day